In this video, we're going to answer a classic probability problem, which is if Team X plays Team Y in a best of seven series, then what is the probability that Team X will win the series given that the current series score is X to Y? And this was inspired by a tweet by mathematician and YouTuber Dr. Treffer, who wrote, the Oilers now have a 21 out of 32 chance to win the Stanley Cup. So the Stanley Cup is a best of seven series, and the current score is one to nothing as I am making this video. So this was calculated by assuming that each game after this first game has a 50% chance to go either way, and drawing out the following tree diagram that shows all the possible ways the next six games in the series can unfold. So there's one way the Oilers can win in four games by winning the next four games in a row, but there are lots of other ways the games can go all the way down to game seven, falling down to the end of this tree. And by adding up the probability of all these different outcomes, we got this final outcome of 21 out of 32. Now this tree method is a sort of classical way to solve this problem. But for this particular problem, there's a clever way you can do it without having to draw the entire tree. That's what I'm gonna show you in this video. And this new method is also gonna answer a bonus problem for us, which is how can you create a sequence of individual bets on the individual games of the series, so that at the end of the series, you have one big bet on who was the winner of the series, regardless of how they won. So whether or not the Oilers win four games to nothing, or if it goes all the way to game seven, you want the final outcome of your bets to be the same thing. And coming up with a sequence of bets is actually kind of tricky. In fact, when I was a PhD student, I was interviewing for a summer internship, and they asked me this problem as an interview question. And I think they were expecting me to draw this big tree and figure out all the bets, so they gave me a lot of time to do it, and they were really surprised by how quickly I was able to do it with the method that I'm about to show you. Uh, it really is like a hack to really speed up this kind of problem. So what is this method? Well, first of all, instead of drawing a tree, we're gonna draw something much simpler, which is a grid. And so here is the grid, and it has all the possible values for X and Y, going from zero to four for both X and for Y. These are all the possible things that can happen in the series. And you'll notice I've actually left off one possibility, which is the X equals four, Y equals four possibility. That one is actually impossible to get to because the series always ends before we get to that one. And what we're gonna do is very simple, Inside each of these boxes, we are gonna write down the honest to goodness, what is the probability that Team X will win given the current score of the series X to Y. If we can fill those in, we're gonna answer the question. In fact, that 22 out of 32 is exactly the score we're looking for in that box when X equals one and Y equals zero. So how are we gonna fill these in? The secret is to start where it's easy and work your way backwards. And where is it the easiest to answer this question? It's on the edges. So for example, when Y equals four, the series is over, Team Y has already won. So we can fill those in. Team X has a 0% chance of winning if Y ever gets to four games, regardless of what Team X has done up to that point. Similarly, if Team X gets to four, then they have a 100% chance of winning. They have won the series. So those are easy. And now we're gonna take these known values on the edge and we're gonna sort of work our way backwards, solving iteratively, going all the way back to X equals zero, Y equals zero. And the update rule that lets us do this is very simple. Whenever you have three boxes sort of arranged in an L shape like this, with some value A over here in the upper box and some value B over here in the right box, there is a very simple formula to figure out what goes in the box in the corner. And that simple formula is just A plus B over two. And the reason this update rule works is that if you are at the location X, Y, then half the time you will go up to this location where the probability of winning is A, and half the time you will go to this location where the probability of winning is B. So if half the time your chance of winning is A, then half the time your chance of winning is B, then what is your chance of winning? Well, it's A plus B divided by two. Another completely equivalent way you could represent this rule is as a functional equation that looks like this. And it says, if we let P of X, Y be this probability that Team X wins the series, then P of X, Y is the average of two numbers. It's P of X plus one Y and P of X, Y plus one. The one half here representing the probability that either X goes up by one or Y goes up by one. So this is completely equivalent to this update rule that we see visually. It's just that the visual update rule is a lot easier to apply. Where can we apply this update rule? Well, the first place is in this little top bit where we know the probability up here and the probability over here. So we can combine them by the update rule to get the probability of this square where x equals three, y equals three. And that probability is simply one half. The average of zero and one is a half. Now that we have zero and a half, we can also work our way and figure out that entire row where y equals three. So the average of a half and zero is a quarter. The average of a quarter and zero is an eighth. And the average of an eighth and zero is one sixteenth. And we can see actually these make perfect sense. If Y is at three, they're one game away from winning the series. The only way that X can win is to win all the next games in a row. So they either have to win one, two, three, or four games in a row to win the series. 
those are the probabilities a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth. Similarly, in the exact same way, we can get the far right column. So averaging these up, we get three quarters, seven eighths, and fifteen sixteenths. And the magic of this method is we can just do it again. So averaging these numbers, we get four eighths, five sixteenths, and six thirty seconds. The nice thing about these averages that makes them easy to do is we're just adding the numerators. So four plus one is five, and then we're changing the denominator from an eight to a 16. Very simple to do quite quickly. And this already contains some non-trivial facts. So by doing the average of an eighth and four eighths, we figure out that the chance of winning when the series is one to two for X is five sixteenths. And in any case, we can keep going with this method. So figuring out the far right column, 11 sixteenths and 26 30 seconds. You'll notice there are the complement of whatever was across the diagonal there. And we can fill in the rest of the numbers. And we finally get to that number we were looking for, 42 out of 64, for the chance for X to win the series, given that they are up one to nothing, it is 42 out of 64. And the only computation we had to do was this operation of adding the numerators and bumping up the denominator by another power of two, those sequence of additions lead you to 42 out of 64 without having to draw a big tree or count up all the branches of the tree. I'll say a couple more comments. One is, what if instead of being 50-50 for each game, it was 60-40 for each game? What would we do then? And the only thing we'd have to do, we would have to slightly change the update rule. So the update rule right now says 50% of A and 50% of B. If you changed it to 0.6 times A plus 0.4 times B, so a weighted average of the two numbers to the up and the bottom, then you could again extract the probability to win with this grid by just using a weighted average instead of simple averages. Okay, and finally, I promised the answer to this bonus problem, which is how can you create a bet on the overall winner of the series using only individual bets on the individual games of the series? So for example, like if we placed a, a fixed size bet, we always bet $1 on every individual game, then at the end of the series, how much we win or lose will depend on how long the series was. If Team X wins in four games, then we'll be up $4. But if Team X wins in seven games, we will have lost the three bets where Team Y won, and we will only be up $1. So we want to construct our bets in such a way that the final outcome of our bets is always the same, no matter how the games turned out. That's what makes this a tricky problem. But the answer to this problem is actually contained in this grid of probabilities we already calculated. And it all comes from this key observation that for any given square, the difference between that square and the square above it, so 1 half minus a 0, 1 half minus a 0, is exactly the same as the difference between that square and the square to its right. So 1 minus 1 half. And of course this makes perfect sense given our update rule, each square is the average of these two numbers, so the difference has got to be the same on either side. But what this means is if we start with a bankroll given by one of these numbers, so we start with half a dollar in our bank account, and we bet this difference, so in this particular case we would bet also a half a dollar, then after our bet, if we win the bet, we'll go up to $1, and if we lose the bet, we'll go to $0. So what we're saying is if you bet this difference amount, then your bankroll will either be one of these two numbers. So saying the same thing again a slightly different way, if you calculate the difference between each square and the square above it and to the right of it, which are equal numbers, and you always bet that amount of money when you're in that situation, then your bankroll will always be equal to a number on the square. Let me give you an example starting from the very beginning. If at the very beginning of the series, where x equals 0, y equals 0, we have 64 out of $128 in our bank account, and we happen to place a bet for exactly 5 out of $32, so we take this and we make that our bet size, then what's going to happen is we're either going to win the bet or we're going to lose the bet. If we win the bet, then we're in this square. And we have 42 out of $64 in our bank account because the, the series is one to nothing. Now, if we place another bet and we place another five out of 36 bet, let's pretend we win that as well. Now our bank account is 26 out of $32. And again, the reason is these numbers, five out of 32, are exactly the differences between the squares. When we win the bet, our bankroll exactly becomes the number in the next square. So by always betting this amount, we will see that if X wins all the games in a row, we'll walk from here to here to here to here, so if X wins the sequence in four, and our final bankroll will be $1. On the other hand, let's suppose that the, the games come out a different way. Let's say we lose the first game, win the next game, win the next game, uh, lose the next game, uh, win the next game, and then win like that. Well, then again, our bankroll will end up at $1. So by placing bets which are equal to the differences between these numbers, our bankroll is always equal to a number on the grid, and our bankroll will always end at $1, if X wins, and it will end at $0 if Y wins. So that's the answer to this question. How do you create a sequence of bets on individual games to replicate a final bet on the entire series? What you have to do is bet these amounts, which are the differences in the probabilities. And the sequence of bets is very closely related to the following random object. You can make this all stochastic processes that are functions of time. 
So you can think of time as the number of games into the series we are, and XT and YT, those are random sequences, which are the score of Team X and Team Y at time T in the sequence. And you can make this new random sequence called P of T, which is the probability that Team X wins given the information at time T. So this, this information at time T is just what is the score for Team X and Team Y respectively T games into the sequence. So P now is really these numbers at the beginning of the series, P is a half, and then P is gonna evolve according to these numbers. So maybe it'll become 22 over 64, and then it'll become six over 32. The numbers in the grid are the values of this PT, and PT is evolving as a random walk through this grid. So this thing is called the Doob Martingale, and the function PT, if you define it this way, the expected value or the probability of some event given information up to time T, it's always a Martingale. So it goes up or down by the same amount on average, and that is what lets this bat size thing work. And if you like this kind of thing, I have a few other videos on martingales that you should check out. You can use them to calculate all sorts of things, and they come up all the time in these slick probability proofs.